Hi everyone and thanks for watching my online lesson on identify the transformation. So these questions are where they give you a transformation that's already happened on the grid and you've got to describe to the examiner what transformation has taken place. So we're going to go through all of the four transformations which is translations, enlargements, reflections and rotations. So in this example we can see that the shape has not been turned, so it's not a rotation. Um, it's not been reflected because it's actually moved upwards. If this shape Q was up one square, then it could be a reflection, but it's not. Um, the shape hasn't got any bigger or any smaller. It's the same size. All that has happened to the shape is that it has been moved on the grid. So the word for a move is translation. So I'm going to write translation here. You need to make sure you're using the correct words. You can't just say moved. So I'm going to say translation. The next thing I have to tell the examiner with a translation is how far has it moved. Now if you read the question carefully, it says describe the transformation that will map shape P onto shape Q. So it's important we're going from P to Q. So I'm going to look at how far this has moved. I'm going to do a cross there, and that's the same point as that one there on Q. So to get from my point on P to my point on Q, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six squares left, and one square down. Now I need to write this in vector form. So I'm going to write my vector, and I'm going to write minus six, because it's six left, and minus one because it's one square down. You need to use the vector for this. Here's our next example. So with this shape, we can see that the shape has been flipped over. It's not been enlarged, not been made any bigger, and you can actually get tracing paper out and test that it's not a rotation. We can see it's been reflected. Now I need to find the line that it's been reflected in. If I pick a point on B and the same point on A and count the squares between them, there's one, two, three, four, five, six squares between them. So the halfway point there is going to be where my line is. So that is my line of reflection. So I need to write down the word reflect or reflection can't just say um, it's been flipped or turned over and I've got to write down what is the line it has been reflected in so this line here goes through minus one on the x-axis all of these points on this line have an x-coordinate of minus one so it's a reflection in the line x equals minus one Here's our next transformation. In this one, it's not got any bigger or smaller. It's not just been moved because it's actually been turned around. And if we get some tracing paper, we can test it out and we can tell it's a rotation. So I'm just going to write down first rotation. Again, you can't just say it's been turned. You have to use the correct word, which is rotation. Now for this next bit, you'll need a bit of tracing paper. You need to place your tracing paper, and this is from triangle A to triangle B. So you need to pick, place your tracing paper over triangle A, draw around triangle A, and to find the center, there's nothing you can do but pick random coordinates. It's gonna be somewhere around here in the middle, and turn your tracing paper and see which point will land shape A onto shape B when you hold that point with your pencil. Often it is the origin, so always start with the origin, or you know it's going to be somewhere between these two shapes, so on this one an origin is definitely a good place to start. Trace around A, turn your tracing paper and see if it lands on B. With this one it actually is the origin, so that's my next piece of information is that the centre is the origin. I can put origin or I can put my coordinate which is 0, 0. And then with rotations, there's another piece of information I need to give, and that is how far has it been turned and in what direction. So this one is actually a 180 degree turn. 
and because it's 180 degrees I don't have to give the direction because it doesn't matter which direction. If this had been a 90 degrees I need to say whether it was clockwise or anticlockwise so I'm just going to say 180 degrees. Here's my final transformation. So this one we can clearly see that the shape has changed its size. It's actually grown in size this one because it says what maps shape P onto shape Q. So we're going from P to Q and we can see it's grown in size. So the first thing I have to write is what is the proper word for something growing or shrinking and that is my enlargement. So I'm going to write it's an enlargement. The next thing they'll need to know is what is the scale factor of the enlargement, so how much has it enlarged by. So if we look on my grid, this bottom line of P is 2 squares, and that's ended up as 4 squares. This one up the side here was 2 squares, and that's also ended up as 4, and the one at the top was 1, and it's ended up as 2. So we can see that these lengths are being doubled. So my scale factor is 2. If these numbers were more complicated and not as easy to spot, what we do is we take the new length. So in this example, it would be my length on Q and divide it by the original length. And that gives me the scale factor. So in this example, I'd be doing 4 divided by 2 which is 2 to give me my scale factor. So scale factor is 2. And the final thing, and this is the most complicated thing to do, is to find the centre of the enlargement for my final mark on this question. So to find the centre, what we actually need to do is we need to join up the vertices on shape Q with the same vertices on shape P with a straight line. So I'm going to draw a straight line here and continue that down past where P goes. A straight line from here to here and again continue it down past the shape. A straight line from here to here as well and go straight down and my final one here and here as well. So I'm going to join all those up with a straight line. So here you can see I've joined up all my vertices with these straight lines. You need to do this as accurately as you can, so definitely need to be using a ruler and a pencil for this and join them up really neatly and continue that line down. And you should see that all your lines join together at a point. And that point is your centre of enlargement. So I'm going to write centre and I need to give the coordinate. And in this example, that coordinate is this one here where they all join up and meet, so that is the coordinate 1, 0. Thank you for watching.